Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, if you do enjoy the video that you came here to watch, do me a favor, go ahead and hit that little red subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. It really does help my audience grow. It really does help this channel grow. It means more than you realize. So go ahead, hit that little red button. Also remember, full episodes of the Aaron Torres podcast, wherever you download your podcast, Apple, Spotify, et cetera. Now, here is the video that you came here for. But where I want to start, where I want to go, where we are going to begin is at Auburn. Because there is a saying at Auburn, just Auburn being Auburn, J-A-B-A. And what that essentially means is that there is constant craziness all the time. Chaos is the norm at Auburn. And that is certainly the case with this coaching carousel search, which started about three, four weeks ago when Brian Harson was fired. The last time we updated you, Auburn had clearly found who their lead candidate was. He said no. And then on top of that, we had a follow-up in which they had their new lead candidate. Just one problem. Auburn can't figure out what it wants. Their new lead candidate might not be the guy. And so it is absolute chaos right now. Let's break it down. Let's talk about it. Let me start by saying this. The lead candidate, the one that they wanted, we all know was Lane Kiffin. And I told you a few days ago before I went on my little Thanksgiving hiatus, I said, look, I don't think Lane Kiffin's going to be the guy. I've said from the beginning, I thought that he was leveraging Auburn to get bigger money and more of what he wants at Ole Miss, just like he did last year at LSU, Florida, Miami, where he was a candidate for all of them, and he ends up staying at Ole Miss. Well, what ended up happening all week long, there's back and forth. Lane Kiffin denies. He says he's planning on staying at Ole Miss. On Saturday morning, it becomes official as he signs an eight-year contract that will pay him $9 million a year. For those of you wondering, yes, by Mississippi state law, as we have discussed many times, state employees can only sign four-year contracts. They found some workaround. It's apparently being paid through the school's foundation as opposed to the school itself. Regardless, Lane Kiffin isn't going anywhere anytime soon. And so with the news that Lane Kiffin was no longer going to be the guy, The latest come early Saturday was that they had focused on Hugh Freeze and that Hugh Freeze was believed to be the guy who was set to be the next Auburn head coach. His candidacy, we've talked about quite a bit. Listen, he's been on this show, full disclosure. He told me on this show, yes, the bottom line is there are certain jobs that I would listen to. He listed some criteria. And while he didn't name Auburn specifically, and I didn't ask him about Auburn specifically, uh, it seemed as though Auburn would be one of the jobs that he would be interested in. Well, just one problem. Because just a few hours after his name becomes official, a couple things happen. One, Liberty loses. Who cares? Whatever. You lose. It doesn't ultimately matter. Two, beyond that, he says that, yes, Auburn is a school that I would listen to, but they haven't offered me anything yet. And until then, I'm the Liberty head coach. Well, on Sunday, this is really where the craziness happened as Auburn. Remember about three, four years ago when Tennessee tried to hire Greg Schiano and there was kind of a fan revolt, a fan uprising. I wouldn't call what is happening at Auburn exactly that per se necessarily. But there is a very vocal group of Auburn fans that do not want Hugh Freeze. There's a very vocal group of fans that do want him. They are publicly fighting on message boards and social media and whatever. And now this Hugh Freeze thing, as I record here about 7, 7.30 Eastern time on Sunday, could change by the time you listen. Hugh Freeze or someone else could be the next head coach, but it is very much in jeopardy. So what are Auburn fans fighting about? Well, frankly, it's a a bunch of stuff that you already know and maybe some stuff that you don't know, some stuff that I just learned here over the last couple days, last couple hours. First, there are the Auburn fans that aren't comfortable with the way things ended at Ole Miss. I've talked about it a million times. You don't need me to tell you. I have no insight that you do not know. But if you do a quick Google search, a quick Wikipedia search, well, we know that Hugh Freeze was fired at Ole Miss for hiring escorts while he was the head coach at Ole Miss. Certainly not behavior I condone, certainly not behavior that I think is befitting of a you know high-profile football coach. But at the same time, as I've said many times, look, it was six years ago, he made a mistake, and the bottom line is in that space, it's not my business to judge, okay? I've said it many times. His wife appears to have forgiven him. His children appear to have forgiven him. It is not my place to speculate on 
what's right, what's wrong, what's this, what's that. If his children forgive him, if his wife forgives him, I, I think he should be allowed to coach football, which he is doing at a very high level at Liberty. What happened on Sunday, though, is a couple other stories kind of came out that that had, I guess, were public, but maybe not as well known. And it is giving, again, some of the Auburn faction, or at least some of the Auburn fans, some pushback as to whether Hugh Freeze should be the guy or not. One, it involves a sexual assault allegation on campus. Um, apparently, uh, Coach Freeze, there were some screenshots shared that he DM'd one of the people involved in it. And what I would tell you, I don't think that's very smart behavior. The DMs are cut off. We don't know very much about it, but those DMs were shared over the last day or so. And again, giving Auburn some concern, some whatever, 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 whatever. The screenshots, by the way, are not new. They're from like July. They've been out there. But of course, when you're about to potentially be the face of a high profile SEC school, this come stuff comes to fruition. Beyond that, there were also some reports that resurfaced of stuff that Hugh Freeze was accused of in the past. I'm not even going to begin to speculate on that. It was while he was a high school football coach decades ago. Uh, he's denied it. The school that employed him denied it. And so that is not my space to do so. Here's the problem, though, as it pertains to this. The latest per multiple reports is that Auburn and Hugh Freeze's camp have basically not been in touch in, in several hours. And so this goes from he's the favorite, it could be finished very soon, to now, as of midday Sunday, they haven't been in touch. And I think what's going to get very interesting going forward is what happens next. Now, before we get into what happens next, I do want to say one very important thing. For any Auburn fan that is concerned about the stuff that has come up, listen, I'm not here to tell you how you should feel, how you shouldn't feel. But one thing does come to mind for me when I see all these accusations and rumors and innuendo and this and that, this is why you hire a search firm. Okay. And so for people who don't follow college sports religiously over the last couple, you know, decades or the last decade or so search firms have really become a very important part of the coaching carousel and basically a school before they hire an AD, frankly, before they hire a president and certainly before they hire a high profile coach in any sport, they hire a search firm. And the search firm's job is to, to go into the guy or girl's background, do research, do homework. What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? And is there anything that we don't know about? And so why I'm not going to sit here and crush Hugh Freeze or anybody else for that matter is because Auburn hired a search firm. And if the search firm did their job, then my guess is if Hugh Freeze was the favorite post lane Kiffin, then the search firm probably didn't find anything that was all that scandalous. Previous reports, previous rumors, previous innuendos, previous whatever, stuff that is public. And so to me, again, this is why I'm not going to go accusing people of certain things. This is why you hire a search firm. This is why you pay hundreds of thousands of dollars. What I do think is very interesting, though, is what comes next at Auburn. And what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, again, we talked about it. J-A-B-A, -A, Jabba, just Auburn being Auburn. This is why there's constant chaos. This is why people don't want the head coaching job. This is why people don't want the AD job. And so if you're John Cohen, the new AD, this is your first big test, right? Remember what happened the last time Auburn tried to hire a head coach. The AD, the, the AD fires Gus Malzahn. The boosters try to hire somebody. The AD says, no, I'm in charge. I'm making my hire with Brian Harson, And that's really when all the chaos started, Okay. And so if you're John Cohen, this is your moment to kind of stand up and say, no, 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 no. We're, I'm taking control of this. I'm doing it my way. I have hired the search firm. I know what the search firm says. And if I believe this is the best candidate, then I am going to go ahead and hire this person. If I don't believe he's the best candidate, I'm going to look elsewhere. But to me, this is where the AD, you get paid a lot of money. You got to wear your big boy pants and do what is needed in this exact situation right here. If you believe he is the best guy, go get him. If not, go get somebody else. But you can't sit around. You can't wait. You can't let Twitter and message boards dictate what you do or do not do. The second thing that I keep coming back to, and I say this all the time, this happens all the time in coaching searches. But at the end of the day, you know what? None of this will matter if one simple thing happens. If you win. And there is a reason that Hugh Freeze is the favorite to be the Auburn head coach, or at least he was as of midday Saturday. It's because of the fact that Hugh Freeze is the only candidate that is now available. Obviously, Lane Kiffin is out. 
that has won at the highest levels of the SEC. You don't need me to tell you again, but he beat Alabama twice, beat Georgia in his final year when Kirby Smart got there, went to -to back-to-back Sugar Bowls. This guy is going to win. And so I know there is a very vocal minority, or at least a a vocal group. I don't want to say a minority, but a vocal group of Auburn fans that do not want this. Okay, that's your prerogative. That's your decision. But if you're winning game, if you win eight, if you win nine, if you win 10 next year, if you beat Alabama, if you beat Georgia, whoever, nobody is going to care. So John Cohen, if he, you think he's the right guy, don't listen, do the job, do the job that you were hired for. What I would finally say, if it's not Hugh Freeze, this is where it gets really interesting because here's what I can tell you that I know about the Auburn coaching search. I can tell you this for sure. I know that Lane Kiffin was the number one guy. That's not really new information. I'm not breaking any news. I know that if they didn't get Lane Kiffin, Hugh Freeze was the number two, and they anticipated Hugh Freeze being the guy. And they really have no plan C because they knew that Hugh Freeze was going to say yes if they offered him the job. Well, now, as we record, we're in this weird holding pattern where nobody really knows and nobody's for sure and nothing's certain. But why I bring it up is because of the fact that right now, we don't even know who a plan C would be. Lane Kiffin was plan A. They weren't supposed to have to worry about anything beyond plan B because Hugh Freeze was a slam dunk. Said it on this show. Certain jobs he was interested in. Said it after the game itself on Saturday that Auburn is a place he'd be interested in if they offered. So now it's on Auburn. It'll be interesting to see. And I'll tell you this. A couple things. One, I don't think Hugh Freeze is going to wait around forever. If he does not think that he's getting a fair shake from the school after everything they've done over the past couple weeks, he's going to pull his name out of consideration. Two, Auburn, don't mess around. Make this decision. If Freeze is the guy, go get him. If he isn't, then go ahead and move on to your next candidate. You can't waste more time.